what what do you see now today as the main obstacles to a two-state solution being reached? In the United States in 1954, the Supreme Court passed what's considered a historic decision. It was called Brown versus Board of Education. And it said that separate cannot be equal, that we have to end segregation. For 10 years, there was no integration in the South. There was a legal decision, but then it requires people to translate that legal decision into a practical reality. Because the government wasn't about to do anything. It passes a law, but it's not about to implement it unless it's forced to implement it. And that's where people come in. People have to act. It's the old adage, and I, I say it as a uh, resolute atheist, God helps those who help themselves. That's the same thing in the Israel-Palestine conflict. The law is on their side. The main institutions in the world are on their side. But the U.S. is blocking any action. The U.S. Back, or Israel backed by the United States is blocking any action. So what is to be done? You can sit back in despair and say, ah, law, it's nonsense, nobody listens to the law. Or you can say law is a powerful weapon in trying to reach public opinion and forcing people to act. So the people in the South said, we are going to demonstrate, get ourselves beaten and even killed in order to put enough pressure on the federal government that it's going to force integration on the South. We are going to make a ruckus, a ruckus including giving up our lives. The same thing the Palestinians have to do now. They have to create a mass movement with our support, meaning people around the world who are going to be telling fellow Americans all the Palestinians want is that the law be implemented. The law says the West Bank, Gaza, East Jerusalem, those are Palestinian territories. All the Palestinians are saying is enforce the law. And then it's our job, meaning supporters here, to broadcast that message, to tell people what the Palestinians are asking is not the sun, the moon, the sky, the universe. They're asking for something very, relatively speaking, conservative. The obstacle is twofold. Number one, the Palestinian so-called leadership is completely corrupt, and it's terrified of its own population because it's afraid that if it organizes a mass movement, the first thing the mass movement will do will be dispose of them, which is probably what will happen. And number two, for good reasons, I don't fault them far from it. The Palestinians are despondent, despairing, depressed. They just don't believe after the long succession of hopes which were dashed, they don't believe that change is possible. But if we can rekindle that sense of hope among the Palestinians, and there's a real mass mobilization, I think the Israelis don't have a prayer in the world. 